Hello to everyone watching this footage. It's Leviathan here again. And to start things off, I'm going to introduce myself to newcomers. I'm born high-functioning autistic, I'm obsessed with fiction, and I'm planning to make my own creative universe like the late Stanley did. I apologize if the audio for this video becomes a bit out of place, because recently I had a bit of a uh, problem with my tongue. So I apologize if I sound like I'm speaking in the warped language, which is a legitimate language in my Leviathan universe. And I hope you guys could be able to understand me as fluently as you can, and so forth and so forth. I figured I should make this video today, so that way I could get it over with for Thanksgiving coming into play and such. And I have four characters that I'm going to introduce you guys, and... I hope you guys are able to pay attention and such. I'm, I just want to make sure the quality of this video is good for you guys. So bear with me. Here's the first character. Bad Lyra. Real name, inapplicable. Height, 60 feet to 835 feet. Weight, 8 tons, unrevealed. Status, villain, and daughter of Bad Beatrix. Base, the untrusted dimension, mobile. Intelligence, three and a half brains. Behavior, stubborn and destructive. She always enjoys helping her mother. Lethality, as above. She has extreme persistence. Weaknesses, her innocent counterpart and rejection. Powers, she has the same powers as Princess Lyra, along with pure ruthlessness. Eyes, Vivid red, hair, brownish blonde, and shoulder length. Origin. In the untrusted dimension, the native princess Lyra is a chaotic version of her who's willing to follow the footsteps of her mother, the native Bad Beatrix. When she learned that her mother had an innocent counterpart, Bad Lyra figured that she would have one as well. Or figured that she'd have one, had one as well, you know? After traveling to the planet Pheromonas via Vortex, Bad Lyra tracked down and attempted to destroy Princess Lyra. However, during the fight, the heroic Dr. Panic summoned a swarm of amphitheories to torment Bad Lyra, prompting her to flee to the untrusted dimension. Just so you know, an amphitheories, they basically think of a winged viper, basically. After having her wounds treated in her home reality, Bad Lyra would since do all that she could to get her revenge on Princess Lyra. Costume. She wears the same clothes as Princess Lyra. Teams. Solitary with her mother and other villains. Original inspiration, Princess Lyra. The next character I'm going to introduce is a very unique species in terms of such. And I'm going to introduce the main member of that supposed species. Here it is. Captain Nose. Real name, inapplicable. Height, 6 feet 2 inches. Weight, 173 pounds. Status, hero and ruler of Noseus. Base, Noseus Mobile. Intelligence, 3.5 brains. Behavior, willful, heroic, and charming. He is quite fond of the ladies. Lethality. Only when threatened, during a fight, or if he sneezes. Weaknesses. Rejection, sneezing, and no healing factor. Powers. He possesses a cosmically acute sense of smell, just like the rest of his people. He doesn't need to eat, drink, or sleep, and possesses astral vision. Basically seeing with your soul rather than with your eyes. He also has some martial arts, along with wielding an arsenal of revolutionary-era weapons. Eyes and hair? None. Origin? The distant planet Noseus is a special planet due to the fact that all the Noseans have large noses instead of heads. And despite that, they are a very successful species. One day, Captain Nose, who's the ruler of his people, soon encountered a traveling Nazrum who he simply perceives as beautiful. After they teamed up to defeat an infestation of piranha hornets, Nazdril and Captain Nose decide to start dating each other. 
Since then, Captain Nose and Nazdrill were inseparable unless they need to do separate missions where the circumstances say otherwise. Costume He wears a set of blue Revolutionary Arrow clothes. Teams, solitary, with Nazdrill and other heroes. Fortune inspiration, Noses. The last one is the imperfect duplicate of the villain Dark Pym, known simply as Dark Dim, native to the quirky dimension, which is basically involving imperfect counterparts of the heroes and villains. And here's the story. Here's the thing. Dark Dim. Real name, inapplicable. Height, 15 feet. Weight, 500 pounds. Status, anti-hero and ally of Pym. Base, the quirky dimension, mobile. Intelligence, two brains. Behavior, loopy yet willful. She will always try to help others in need. Lethality, only during a fight. Weaknesses, low IQ and rejection. Powers, she possesses similar powers as Pym along with the power to create nuclear belches. She also wields an arsenal of non-lethal futuristic weapons. Eyes glowing orange, hair light auburn, scruffy and luscious. Origin. In the quirky dimension, the native Dark Pym is rather an imperfect counterpart of her known only as Dark Dim. One day, Dark Pym transported her imperfect duplicate to her Fortress of Terrorism, which is, by the way, located on the moon, where she convinced Dark Dim to help her destroy Pym, stating that she was a threat to the public. Luckily, when Pym revealed to Dark Dim during their fight on who is truly to blame, Dark Dim ended up defeating her default counterpart by performing a nuclear belch, knocking Dark Pym out of commission. Since then, Dark Dim will do all she can to help those who deserve to be helped. Costume? She wears a similar outfit as Dark Pym. Team Solitary with Pym and others. Order of Inspiration, Pym, and DC's Bizarro. The last one I'm going to introduce will help give you an understanding more for Bad Lyra by introducing you the innocent version, which is the default version of her known as Princess Lyra. Princess Lyra. Real name, inapplicable. Height, 60 feet to 835 feet. Weight, 8 tons to unreveal. Status, hero. Base, the planet Pheromonus. Intelligence, 4 brains. Behavior, loving and willful. Lethality, during a fight or threatened. Weaknesses, rejection and misogyny. Powers. She has similar powers to her mother. She has cosmic beauty and uncanny reasoning skills. Weapons, none. Eye color, olive green. Number of eyes, two. Her hair is brownish blonde in shoulder length and is either wavy or flowy. She dresses in casual wear. Teams, solitary or partners. Species, cosmic entity. Beauty level, nearly cosmic. Special features, beauty and personality. Transportation, walking and powers. Occupations. She's the daughter of Queen Beatrix and is an intergalactic supermodel. Friends, Queen Beatrix and heroes. Enemies, villains and misogynists. Inspiration, royalty. To help you gain a better understanding, Queen Beatrix is the creator and ruler of all the things that are active on the planet Pheromonis. And she's so beautiful that everything on the planet Pheromonis is completely in love with her. Like everything, the clouds, the atmosphere, the water, the mountains, the trees, the native wildlife and such, everything on the planet Pheromonis is dedicated to their creator and ruler, who's Queen Beatrix. And Princess Lyra is basically the daughter of Queen Beatrix, you know? Okay, those are the four characters that I will be introducing, as far as I know, for this video. And second mention, I apologize if I seem a bit comprehensible. It's inadvertent circumstances, if you ask me. So I hope you guys uh, have a fine Thanksgiving feast once the time comes. And if you guys want, you could like, subscribe, and comment down below. It's your choice. And until next time, happy Thanksgiving.
enjoy the rest of the year for all you guys and such. And until next time, enjoy the vision.